Hello, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Grams, and I'm going to tell you a story about walls coming down. That there in the photo is me preparing for an interview. In this video, you'll hear me, but you won't see me because I'm always behind the camera. Last summer, I interviewed neighbors of People of Praise missionaries in Evansville and Shreveport, and that's where our story begins. Like every story, this story has a hero. The hero must overcome in a great battle against evil to win peace for his land. He's not without help, but that comes later. First, the hero of our story is Christ, who appears in many faces. Nothing too special about me. I love the Lord. That's one special thing. And, um, you know, what the old saying is, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. You know that song? No, I do want to know it, but I should. It's a song. It sounds like a good one. Uh-huh. <laughs> Your work, what kind of work do you do? Restaurant. Restaurant. Like, do you do you cook or do you serve? What do you do? Let's put it like this. I do everything. Everything that needs to be done, I do it. And, and if it's not done the way that I like it, we got a problem. <laughs> yeah. I'm blessed. I'm blessed every day. God wakes me up, he puts my feet on the floor, and I'd have all these different scrapes in life. And my mom always told me, she said, God has a special plan for me, for you. You know, there's greens, which is really popular in our neighborhood. A lot of us like greens. Um, green tomatoes, and those are hard to find at any other farmer's market because they always wait till they ripen to sell them. But they sell the green tomatoes, which if, if you don't know, those are actually the best because you could fry them and they're so good. If you're gonna be at the produce stand Saturday, I'd get some green tomatoes. I'll, I'll fry them for you if you'd like. <laughs> Our hero in this story cannot ignore his father's call to action. One man in Evansville, who doesn't appear here, told me, if I ever had any need for forgiveness, God was always there to forgive me. So now when others are in need, I feel like it's a part of my obligation to do what I can for the community. I met him when he was checking up on his elderly neighbor's plumbing. Here's how some of the people you've just met put it themselves. John, like you were describing the other day how you were bringing meals over to the man next door. Andrew. Okay, so could you tell me about that? Um, his wife passed away and so I brought him every morning breakfast and most afternoons lunch and every, at least every night dinner and sometimes dessert. And we'd sit and we'd chat. I was always taught growing up that if you have a little bit more than somebody else, then you have a little bit to give. So that's, we tried, you know, that with Andrew, and I think it helped him a lot more than we even knew. So he started getting out, mowing, and doing things he used to do again, and that was just so nice to see. Like, if I go to a food pantry and I have extra, I go all down the street. Um, and let people know I give food to everybody. <laughs> Even uh, Dave and them, I gave them so much bread. I know they was tired of bread, <laughs> saying so much bread. We have to look out for each other, you know. I, I really believe in Neighborhood Watch. <laughs> Cause you, you know, you, you could be like at home and maybe your neighbor's not, you know. So you, you, it's good for some, it's always gonna be somebody at home on your street to see something. Because one night, Miss Georgia, she was in her sleep and she left her kitchen window up and it was late. And so I called Miss Patricia. She's uh, the latest day in the blue house. So she called her son. It was late, it was like after 12. Keep in mind, she's in her 90s. So we just beating on the door, we beating on the door. We was about to kick it in. I was about to go through the window. 
So he finally came and she had left. It was scorching hot in the house. She was in her room sleep. She had left the oven on. Yeah. So you need good neighbors. Chantrell, she's actually someone you haven't seen yet, is going to tell a story about her aunt, who is like a mother to her, so Chantrell sometimes calls her mom. She will also reference her professional work here. She's a private sitter, a home caregiver. My uncle died in 2011. And before he died, he asked me to make sure he, I take care of my aunt. Okay. That was 2011, so 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, so maybe seven and a half to eight years later, my aunt fell. She broke her, broke her legs, okay? She was already up in age, so from there she went downhill. I packed up my, my home, my fiance, my kids, and everything, and I moved in with my aunt and I took care of her until she died. Because at that particular time when I was taking care of her, I couldn't work, you know. I had to, I had to stay at home to take care of her because they wouldn't give her, um, they wouldn't give her aid. The government wouldn't give her aid to, for someone to sit with her. Think about it, I took care of my mom for almost two years, having to change her, having to feed her day in, day out. I know the struggle without having any sleep because she's crying all night because she's hurting. I've been there, and the type of work that I do now, I cry every now and then because I would get into a home that's just not right. And, you know, and the people know that they're not being treated right. And it, it's, it's, it's sad, and I, I just, I don't, I just, you know, I weep for them too because, you know, you never know. You never know when you're going to be old. You never know when you're going to need somebody. Because, see, I can't like call this my hood. Because, see, I can't like take care of everybody around here. You know, uh, with the trash cans, you know, the yards and things, you know, whatever that they need. Because, sure, cause that's the way that my mom. My dad taught me, you know, uh, so that's just the way that I do, you know, uh, help out elder peoples and everybody else. I ain't planning on going nowhere. Yep, I'm going to be here until I lay down. Yep, then when I lay down, I'm in peace. I'm in peace. Our hero also has a real enemy. There's hell in our hero's land. Lisa and Quilisha have gone through hell, and by the grace of God, they're here to tell the story. Uh, we left and went to Owensboro, and... Um, Later that evening, I get a call from um, my neighbor and um, Rose, and she says that, Lisa, honey, your house exploded and is on fire. And I said, I said, what? I told Stephen, I said, Rose is drunk. She doesn't call me and told me our house exploded. She's, it's on fire, Stephen. And I looked at him and I said, after I said that, I didn't know what to think. And because I'm sitting in my wheelchair, you know, and I dialed the number back and I was like, what, Rose? Rose, are you drinking? She's like, no, honey, your house is on fire. And it exploded and there is Four fire trucks here. Honey, you need to come home. My caregiver's husband, ex caregiver's husband. And he was arrested the following Monday. 
He threw a Molotov cocktail through my window. You're going back? Okay, be careful. Open your eyes. There's a lot of violence going on in Shreveport. And it's our kids. Those are the ones that suffer. Those are the ones that's dying, our kids. It's very hurtful to me as a mother, for me to know them, you know, the kids. I've actually known kids when they was Kayla age, they have died, have died due to gun violence, you know, and for me having young men now, I feel for the mothers. I feel for them, you know, their peers, because they're so young. Shreveport, like I said, these last few years have been very disheartening and disappointing to me. Even hitting home with my nephew being killed last year. So it's very disheartening. He was 24. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he stayed right next door. My sister stays next door. He stayed right next door. I seen him every day. He got killed October the 24th. Good, good boy, good boy. We seen him every day. Yeah. So it, it's like I said, this street, I, 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 you know how you feel sometimes you just want to run, but you can't. I hated the fact that, you know, my kids, anybody's kids, but mostly my kids had to learn about death and tragedy so long, so young, you know. Our hero requires reinforcements in the battle. Christ needs help carrying his cross, after all. It's no different for Lisa, Qualicia, or any of the others in these two cities. Someone like Simon of Cyrene, to carry the load with him. That's where you and I come into the story, where the people of praise comes in. When did you first meet the missionaries? One day, I was sitting on my porch. The mailman had came and I was figuring out some bills. And the sunshine of my life walked up behind me and that'd be Miss Mary. Yep, she walked up behind me. I heard the sweetest voice. She was like an angel. She said, hello? Hello? Can I talk to you? <laughs> and I thought, who in the world's that? And I turned around. Mike, he hurried up and went in the house. He left me. <laughs> I was like... I turned around and I was like, why did he leave, you know? I'm like, why did he leave? I'm like, why did he leave me? <laughs> and I thought, oh, I seen the Bible in her hand. Now I know why he left me. <laughs> like, he's scared of her. It's like, what are you doing? And she's just like, oh. she looked at me like, oh, she's going to talk to me. I'm like, I'm not scared of you, lady. Come here. <laughs> Because I wasn't scared of her. She's nice. Miss Mary was missionary Mary Timler, by the way. Chantrell has more to say about when her aunt or her mom died. She mentions Mr. Evan and Ms. Jones. That's Evan Lent and Joan Pingle. She knows them through Praise Academy, a school founded by People of Praise members, where she sends her children. So I had to stay at home, and Mr. Evans... Ms. Jones, and just a lot of people from the school will come and check on me and my kids. You know, they will come by, they, how you doing today? You need any help? Um, what the, how the kids doing? What the kids are doing? Can I say a prayer before I leave? Um, which helped a lot, especially in my grieving moments. When I'm stuck in four walls and I'm just looking at the four walls and and I'm missing her and, you know, 
it helped to be interrupted. You know, to, 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 oh, somebody at the door and it's them with cookies and, you know, little, little activity books for the kids to keep them busy. I mean, a lot that Appraise Academy have done as far as helping me through, even through the hardest time. Chantrell has another story about her son, Alonzo, who graduated from Praise Academy last spring and went on to Loyola, a Catholic high school in Shreveport. It's, I'm starting to see him blossom more. I'm seeing him helping me, you know, take care of the little ones and, you know, more. Um, what, about a week ago, he went outside and cut the grass, and I didn't even know, and I pulled up and said, oh, somebody cut my grass, and it was him. And that I was like, oh, my God, you cut my grass? And I was excited because he'd never done it before. That was something new to me. Mr. Evans, my savior. A truth be told, it, it, maybe Alonzo think it's his savior, but really he's mine because he helps him with his homework. You know, he makes sure that everything that he needs is taken care of. Um, if he goes over with with me, everything and. But he's taken to football practice, he picks them up, um, he reads, they read together. Um, he do his volunteer with them. So Mr. Evan plays a big part in Alonzo right now and especially in his future. And I see him going a long way with just a little help from Mr. Evans. Lexi got some news shortly after the pandemic hit. Advanced lung cancer. It's been a pretty big year, you know, because the pandemic struck and shortly after the pandemic struck, I had found out that I already had one non-functioning lung. And considering the the COVID-19 like effects of your lungs, that got really scary for me. So I kind of just didn't even do anything but sit in my house and hospitals for the whole year because I was so scared, to be honest. Uh, you know, I homeschool my children just because we don't live in the best school districts <laughs> at all. Um, I had tried public school out and it wasn't working well. And um, it started becoming really hard to homeschool them. And that was like my biggest like fear is having to send them back. And I don't know if you know Ellen. Um, she had actually come to me and asked me like, do you need help with anything? And for the longest time, I was just like, no, I'm fine. Like, I'm fine. I'm just going to stay in my house away from everybody. I'm all right, because I was so scared. She finally was like, nothing. And I told her my biggest fear right now is having to send the kids back to public school. So she actually had got back to me like a week later and said, hey, me and Susan talked, and I can do one of the kids' homeschool. And the other kids' homeschool. And like, to me, that's huge. Like, that's really big. That's a lot of responsibility to take on. And I guess I never guessed that, um, I knew we were close with their neighbors, but I didn't, I guess I never guessed that we were so close that they would take that much time and effort just to help us. I felt like I couldn't do enough for my family during that time, so it was really nice that the things that I was lacking doing, that I couldn't do anymore, everybody came and did, and helped, and I didn't have to have that weight of not being able to do the things I should for my family because we live in a beautiful community that, though there's crazy times here, really comes together when it matters the most, you know. Those were missionaries Ellen Earhart and Susan Holovati who did the homeschooling. Here's what Qualicia has to say about the people of praise. They, I got a special place for them because it might sound crazy, they remind me of how my grandmother used to be and her friends in the church. They used to walk around and knock on your door. These was old ladies in the summer heat and knock on your door. Didn't care what you was doing or nothing like that because I used to go with them sometimes. The Lord gave them the strength to go around and knock on people's door and just ask for to pray for them and tell them about the Lord. And how could that not be a good thing? You know, they're not trying to sell your vacuum and you know how people knock <laughs> or insurance. And it's a lot of people that just don't know. Just simply 
<clears throat> don't know the Lord. Really? It's a lot of people who don't. My nephew was one of them. He never went to church. As long as you got people like Joan and Kathleen and Evan and David and Joan that coming around and smiling, you got hope. There's hope. They've seen me at my worst. I'm, I'm telling you, they've seen me at my worst, it's worst, and at my best, and at my sad, and at my happy time. They've been there for everything. They was at, oh, they came to my son's graduation. He just graduated from high school, from Booger T. Washington High School. So they, they've been in my life. I know them, they know me. And that's how I suppose, that's how friends are supposed to be, you know. Sharon Goldston, like Lisa, once welcomed the Evansville missionaries who came to her door. Later, she joined the People of Praise. She gives here just a glimpse of what other kinds of service the People of Praise members do in these neighborhoods throughout the year. Yes, getting to know their neighbors, taking their neighbors to the doctor. They have helped so many neighbors move. That is, that's just hard work. And if their neighbors had someone in their family that had died, they would take something, a dish to the neighbors. They help that neighbor who doesn't have family take care of her yard. And uh, again, I just love what we're doing here. I see the neighborhood just changing all around us. You see the fruit of it a lot when we have a barbecue. Again, I'm just amazed at how God has torn down the walls and where there was a lot of division and the racial divides and everybody just stayed with their own people. The walls are down. And um, what brought it about was years and years of serving in the neighborhood. That's, that is what has, has brought the walls down, is um, serving the neighborhood. I don't think, I'm, I'm almost sure it wouldn't have happened any other way. When the walls are down, what can keep people on either side from one another? On one side was Christ. On the other side, there was Christ too. Lexi shows what happens next. I adore the community here, how it's a community, not just a bunch of people living in little houses. There's neighborhood barbecues on the corner hosted by the people of praise, of course, but everybody comes and everybody chats, even people that don't know each other will just sit at tables together and talk like they knew each other for years, and it's, it's very beautiful. The farm stand is something that's really amazing. So the people of Praise work on these gardens and they do the produce stand every Saturday and they have a suggested donation for a dollar a pound. But like if there's families that can't even afford that, they will just let them pick what they want even and that's amazing. They come up with such good crop and I think honestly, I would just love to say how blessed and appreciative I am to get to move to this neighborhood because the people of Praise really do do so much beautiful stuff and they don't just make these this a, a street or a block, it's, it's a community and it, it feels like home, not just our house, but the whole community, the whole neighborhood just feels like home and I don't know if that would be the same if the people of Praise were not here doing everything they were doing to really just do God's work and make this a beautiful place for a lot of low-income families that otherwise usually would not be able to have such a beautiful neighborhood to live in. And that alone, I think, is just a blessing. This chapter of our hero's story is over. Christ has won great victories for his land. Now, there are more victories to be won 
But when the body of Christ is united, all things are possible. <laughs>